And we are joined now by Al Michaels. And Al, as you and I have discussed over the years, you were afraid that perhaps many people, including your grandchildren, would have no real understanding of how big a part baseball has played in your career. But I think the announcement a month or so ago and programs like this, and especially this summer at Cooperstown, are going to correct that misimpression. You're so right, Bob. I mean, it was such a, an unexpected thrill to be voted the Frick Award. And, and you're right, I'm going to bring, hopefully we'll have a, a live ceremony and my kids will be there, my grandkids will be there and, and other friends. And, and just watching that uh, montage, collage, whatever you'd want to call it, of uh, certain calls I made, <laughs> it really brought home to me how much I miss baseball. And I just happened to be, I was in the right place uh, for a long time when ABC had the rights. And then uh, when NBC got the rights and then Fox eventually, and I, I wasn't in a place to, to be able to do baseball. But obviously in a career where I don't have very many regrets, if any, uh, the one small one would be that uh, for the last 25 years, I've been unable to do baseball. I wish, I wish it had worked out differently. Today and tomorrow, and actually for the past several days at the MLB Network, we've been celebrating the life of Hank Aaron the latest, sadly, of 10 Hall of Famers who have passed away in the space of less than a year. In one way or another, you intersected with all of them. Let's touch upon a few, and we'll begin with Hank Aaron. Well, the first major league game I did, regular season, <coughs> was opening day in Cincinnati. I'm the voice of the Reds back in 1971. I mean, I'm a, I'm a kid. I get the job. I'm, I've got the National League champions. And... I was nervous and excited. You can imagine every emotion. And the first batter who comes to the plate was Sonny Jackson. Gary Nolan was on the mound for the Reds. This was the first ever opening day at Riverfront Stadium because they'd, they'd opened the stadium uh, in place of Crosley Field the, the prior July. And the second batter up was Ralph Gar, who would uh, win two batting titles. And the third batter to come to the plate was Hank Aaron. And I remember thinking to myself, I cannot believe this. I am announcing a game in which Hank Aaron is playing. So uh, it was a one, two, three inning. And then when the Reds come up, the first batter uh, who comes to the plate is Pete Rose. The third batter is Tony Perez. So in the first game I ever did, I had Aaron. I had Phil Necro on the mound for Atlanta. I had Orlando Cepeda. I had Pete Rose. I had uh, uh, Johnny Bench. I had uh, uh, others who... Uh, uh, Davey Concepcion was in the game, he, he, not, not in the Hall of Fame, but you think back to all those guys. Sparky Anderson was the manager at that time. Uh, it was quite a way to begin, I must say. And Reds lost the game, never got to 500 that year, but win the pennant the following year. And, you know, those were three great years that I had in Cincinnati. And then, interestingly, when you left the Reds to go to San Francisco as the voice of the Giants, you were replaced by another Hall of Fame broadcaster, Marty Brenneman, and in the very first half inning he ever worked as the voice of the Cincinnati Reds, Hank Aaron hits number 714 on opening day in uh, 1974. Where do you go from there? I mean, could I have given him a better present as a handoff? <laughs> I leave after three years. You know, I, I know that part of it, too, <laughs> is I'm going to miss possibly the opportunity to do a, um, an historic home run which turned out to be the case. And sure enough, when I'm out in San Francisco doing opening day there and I'm watching what's going on in Cincinnati, I'm saying, you know, I just needed one more season in Cincinnati, but it wasn't to be. And, and, and you know, what a, what a move the Reds made. I, I was there for three years and then Marty Brennan was there for the, for the next 44. They, they made the right choice. Tommy Lasorda, another that we sadly lost recently at age 93, an unforgettable character. And you've got a great story about how you and he first crossed paths in Hawaii. So I'm the announcer for the Hawaii Islanders, AAA baseball, 68, 69, and 70. We were the Angels Farm Club. Our big rival was Spokane, the Spokane Indians, and they were the Dodger AAA team. And that Spokane team had Steve Garvey, Bobby Valentine, Davey Lopes, Bill Buckner uh, and were managed and Bill Russell and were managed by Tommy Lasorda. So because of travel, when a team would come over to play Hawaii, they'd be there the whole week uh, to save on, on having to go back and forth a lot during the season. 
So they'd be there for seven games. And I got to know all of those guys very well. And I got to know Tommy. And Lasorda used to love to tell the story after every game, he would have to get on, on the phone with Al Campanis and the Dodgers general manager and call him up in L.A. and say, you know, here's what Garvey did tonight and here's what Buckner did tonight, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, according to Tommy, one night he says to Campanis, uh, hey, Al, he says, I know, you, I know you've got Vin Scully. Vinny's great. He's going to be there a long time. But i got to tell you, there's a, there's a kid over here. There's a kid. He's doing the games on radio. His name is Al Michaels. This guy, this guy is really good. You know, just kind of maybe you might want to file, file that away. So Campanis doesn't say anything. And then at the end of the conversation, Campanis says to Tommy, uh, Tommy, this, uh, this kid, this Michaels kid you're talking about, how do you know he's any good? Lasorda says, I've been thrown out of the last four games. I've been sitting out in the clubhouse listening to him. So it was a little bit of embellishment. But <laughs> the reality was in Hawaii, if you got thrown out of the game, you didn't go, you didn't sneak into a tunnel behind the dugout. The clubhouse was in deepest, darkest center field. The center field fence was 420 feet away and then another 100 feet to the clubhouse. So you could not sneak back in. So Lasorda would get serenaded. You know, they, he'd leave the ballpark and he could not come back. So he truly is out in the, in the clubhouse listening. So he, got, he actually got thrown out in the third inning one night. The next night, he got thrown out when he brought the lineup card to the plate because he so flipped off from the prior night. And then I think he got thrown out one more time late in, in like the sixth of a seven game series. So, and the, and the, the, the uh, irony of ironies, the umpiring crew featured a man who would go on to umpire 37 years in the major leagues. And we're talking about Bruce Fremming and Bruce was the guy who threw him out. So there's a lot of interconnecting dots here, but uh, Lasorda loves to tell that story. And uh, I have to credit Tommy for helping to discover me. Greg Amsinger, those stories and more like it awaiting us this summer. Fingers crossed that we can have an in-person ceremony, not only for Al, but for Hawk Harrelson, whose selection as the Ford C. Frick Award winner a year or so ago had to be delayed. So it'll be both of them on the stage on induction Saturday before the players are honored on Sunday. So hats off to Al and Greg. It's yours. I love it, guys. Uh Outstanding. I could listen to it all day. Before I let you go, Al, congratulations. Can you tell me how this friendship between you and Bob started? Yes, I can. Uh, the first time I met Bob was at the 1983 World Series. And I was doing the series with Earl Weaver, who had just retired as the Orioles manager, and Howard Cosell. And Bob happens to, to be there and comes into the booth to say hi before the game and introduces himself to Howard Cosell. And Cosell's response to Bob was, I know who you are. You're the kid who rhapsodizes about the infield fly rule. And, and that was how Bob, that's how Bob met Cosell, and that's how, that's how I met Bob. So we go all the way back. <laughs> Great. That, that is absolutely true. That, that was how he greeted me. You're the child who rhapsodizes about the infield fly rule. I'm sure you'll have a fine career. <laughs> Thanks for the encouragement, Mr. Cosell. He was right. He was right. Uh, yeah. Bob, Al, that was so much fun.